She's giving us the tips behind our favorite dinner. Who doesn't love to make pizza with your entire family? And it all starts, of course, with the perfect dough. Joining me now, Gina Buskirk. Thank you so much for being here from Gina's Homemade. You're going to help us make the perfect pizza. I Why am. are we so intimidated well, by making it ourselves? It's we just the pick pizza up the dough. Phone. Yeah. It's the pizza dough. And you do it best at home. And we love, we started doing this years ago at our house um, on Sunday nights, something different, and we would do this home pizza dough and home pizza sauce and everything else, and now we're we gonna show you how ourselves. to do this. And I love how you, all morning we've been talking with you, and you said this is for the person at home. Don't Definitely. feel like you have to be a, a chef like Gina is to do it's this. True. We can really make it ourselves. This we do at home. This is definitely for the home chef at our kitchen at Gina's Homemade. We have a totally different process as most yeah. commercial kitchens do. There's like a two day fermentation process, <laughs> different flour, everything. But I'm not going to scare anybody today. Right. We're gonna we are going to do this window. today, okay. and this is easy, and we're going to use this machine. This and is a Cuisinart. Is this, this is a Cuisinart, but any processor, food processor. Okay. And there's this thing. This is called a dough blade. It's going to look different than any other blade. And it comes with all of these. People usually just put them in their pantry because right. it scares them. What is this? What do I do? Dough. Dough scares okay, people. So it's a dough blade and a, a dough food blade. processor. That's food all we processor. Need. We are going to start with two and three quarter cups of flour. Okay, I have to stop you there. Yep. How important is the flour? There's a lot of flours. There's okay. all purpose. There's self rising. It's very, very important because all flour absorbs differently. It can dry out things. It can make them too moist. It just can change the texture. If I'm allowed to say, I suggest a King Arthur all purpose flour. It works extremely well. Gold metal. I mean, and you can find things in your supermarket. But all purpose is the key there. It is. Okay. You know, I mean, I'm sure they make pizza ones. You don't need to do that. Home chef, you don't need to do that. Okay. So you're going to start with two and three quarters cups of flour. Okay. One teaspoon of just an iodized salt. Okay. Table salt. And now what I did earlier, this is the hardest part of this. You take three quarters cup plus two tablespoons of a hotter water, lukewarm to hot, and you put one tablespoon of yeast. Okay, you can okay. buy it. I even brought, excuse my back, I used this today. You can use active or rapid rise yeast. Okay. One, one don't tablespoon. Forget, don't forget the yeast. And it's supposed to look like this, kind of a thick, mm -hmm. kind of a, almost a beige color. Uh huh. Now, when you put it in, this is what the yeast looks like. I put some in a bowl. Okay. And when you put it in here, after 10 minutes, you're going to get this foamy top. Okay, and, and it's that, lukewarm water. Mm -hmm. And I told them I'm going to let you do okay, this. Okay, okay. So I'm going to have you hit this button. Now just hit the on button and just let it go. Now okay. these little machines are great because look what they do here. You pour this slowly right into here. Okay, this is my yeast and my lukewarm mixture. Mm hmm. Okay. And just let it go. Let the food processor do its thing. Do what it's born to do here. Okay. All right, and we don't need this anymore. And look at what it's doing for oh, you. Yeah. Now, the recipes will say to knead for about 10 to 15 minutes. If you want to, that's fine. You do not have to use this machine. You know, at the kitchen, we have a very large one of these, a commercial called the Hobart. It's like 60, 80 gallons. It's enormous. Different hooks, all the same things, so that you can get here. Now, do you see this? This is why I really wanted to do this with you guys. See how it's forming, but it's still a little crinkly? If you get to, if it doesn't come together for you, pretty soon it might not, don't be afraid to add more water. Just pour a little bit more in, just a little bit. Tell me when to stop. You're good. There you go. And what are we looking for? What are we looking now look for at this. consistency? This is why I want to do this all on film so you can see. Don't be afraid to go in there and touch it. Move it around, help that blade out a bit. And we're going to put it on again and see how it's forming this ball for you. Okay. And this truly is the hardest part, which isn't looking so hard right now. You know, as I said, in commercial kitchens and pizzerias, there's a different process. There's two day fermentation, three day. You do all different things. You have special flowers, everything. But you know what? When you're at home, that's not what you need. You don't need, you know, 500 pounds of pizza right. dough. So now feel this. I don't want you to get too dirty. Oh, but it's feel. okay. Okay, so it's a little, yeah, sticky. little sticky. Don't be worried. You have a little bit extra flour. Flour your surface and knead. You know, you're, you're so right about the intimidation because yeah. people will just give up and say, that's not how it's supposed to look. Uh, it's not how it's supposed to <laughs> yeah, look. Would you like the, to knead or no? I, I'm going to let you, I'm okay. going to stick that to the pros. So, we're okay. kneading. Now, you're not, this isn't a whole lot of kneading, is it? No, this has been not at all. pretty easy thus far. 
So everything did exactly as it was supposed to do. In, everything in did process. exactly as it was supposed okay. to. As I said, you can do this by hand. I don't know if you're going to really want to. Take your bowl, whether it's glass or metal. You coat it with some olive oil. And you take your dough ball and you put it right there. Oh. Now, I saw under here, because you guys are prepared, <laughs> I'm going to take this one. You're going to cover it with saran wrap. Now, people also will just use a towel, a dish towel. Saran wrap, see, you see, I got my trusty saran wrap here. Okay. And but, this, but it's really important to coat that you bowl. You have to I coat the bowl with the olive oil okay. and you just cover it. Now, I did this this morning for all of you. It sits now for an hour to two hours. This is what it'll look like. See how airy it is? And that's the yeast. Versus the dense. You can roll this out. You're going to get a real hard, thin crust. Mm -hmm. It's going to be real hard. This, now that it's risen, there's air in it, you're going to fluff your crust. So let it rest. Just let, let it, it rest. rest. Just leave it alone. <laughs> so one to two, two, one and a half to two hours. Correct. One okay. to two hours. And just at room temperature, you don't have to refrigerate or anything like that. All right, it's so if you're easy. trying to do pizza on a hurry, you don't forget this all important step because it really important. should fill the bowl. Because you need the time for this to sit, the yeast, 10 minutes, and this to rise for two hours. All righty, well, we are just getting started. This is the bottom layer yep. of our delicious homemade pizza. Coming up, Gina's going to take us to the next step, and then by the end of the show, we're going to have a delicious pizza that's that gonna we're going to get to you're bite gonna into. You're going to love it. 